Hey, Jody from Bird Dog Overland here today. Just want to kind of go over with you guys like a one month review of the hardtop we've had on for right at one month. It's been hard to believe it's been that long. Time flies when you're having fun, right? So we got this a couple days before we drove down to Supercell, which is in East Tennessee. It's about a nine hour drive each way. So plenty of chance to get a feel for this thing, kind of see what we like, what we don't like, or anything that might be pro or con compared to the factory soft top that we did have uh you know off the bat i'm just going to tell you up front i love this thing don't have any regrets whatsoever uh you know when i just a little backstory when i first bought my bronco uh, i ordered it back in uh mid 2021 and at that time the mic 1.0 issues were coming to surface and the ford issued email saying hey if you want to get your sooner please consider switching to a soft top I begrudgingly did. I knew from the fact I wanted to get a hard top to begin with, but my thought was, okay, before we get these things fixed, they're probably going to start offering us these uh, as a side item, you know, through Ford Performance Parts or whatever. You know, well, of course, obviously, supply chain shortage nicks that. So regardless, uh, you know, I got my Bronco in January 2021. It's a soft top. It had everything on it. It's Badlands, came with Sasquatch Lux towing, everything that you would think was holding it back so i was kind of surprised i got it as early as i did anyway uh but you know i didn't have the hard top on it so anyway so i knew okay well you know wait and wait talk to people at ford and they're like, oh yeah probably next year so we'll get a hard top option out for everybody that's been over two years ago so anyway uh long story short i didn't want to wait so when i went to buy a hard top i had to decide what i wanted my top priority for me was i wanted something that looked at factory fit and finish I also wanted the same modularity as the factory hardtop. So I wanted the four piece, you know, the one big piece in the back, the one big piece in the middle, and then the two pieces up front. So those were kind of my biggest things I learned to look for, right? So I looked at what's on the market. Right now I know there's at least three, four if you count the armadillo one, which is really a totally different animal by itself. Uh, uh, you know, you have one, I can't remember the name of it. I know that it's, I think it's a one piece all the way around, but, the back window to me, you know, I don't want to offend anybody, but I'm sorry, it looks like a truck camper shell. Okay. I just don't like it. It's cheapest but, uh, version I think that's out there. It or maybe the Armadillo, but I know it's cheapest compared to the Anderson Composites and the ADV. Um, I just don't like it. I just think it looks really crappy in the back. And up front, it doesn't look too bad. But anyway, one solid piece on it. So I automatically nix it on me. Price point was about the only thing that was appealing. So then there's the ADV, which is the higher up level. Uh, it only comes in two different versions, either a solid all the way from front to back, or you can get what they call the modular version, which has the two front pieces, but the middle piece here and here is all one piece. That I could probably live with if it was the only option available. I did price it out with the sound deadening and the rear shirt windshield wiper I think with shipping and all to Chicago, it was going to be well over eight grand. So I thought, okay, well, I'm not really quite drop that quite that much yet, you know. So I kind of wait around, wait around. Well, here, lo and behold, I see Anderson Composites comes out with their own hardtop. So I took the price in the bit, and it seemed to be a little bit more reasonable to me. Just at least MSRP, just a tad under six thousand um, dollars. But it comes with everything. It has all the factory hookups as far as like rear windshield wiper, rear washer. Uh, sorry for the background noise, the motorcycle driving by. Um, pretty much rear defroster. And it has pretty cool sound deadening, um, which I think is actually better than the stock sound deadening for sure. So it piqued my interest. I looked into it, reached out to them. I know that some of their options they'll sell direct but the fiberglass tar, uh, hard tops, they told me that they would only sell through their dealers. So I went online and I found, so, okay, what's the closest dealer to me that sells these things? Our good friends at Middleton Motorsports uh, is a dealer for Anderson Composites. So if you're in the area, I'd highly suggest you check them out. They also offer a ton of other stuff for Broncos, Mustangs, everything, Ford, you name it. So I reached out to them. They're like, oh yeah, sure. So day one, back in mid-November, we ordered it, had them order it. It was the first day that they were accepting orders. Uh, so they ordered it that day, that morning, so to make sure that we were one of the first to get it, right? 
So, you know, initially I think they were supposed to get start shipping out late December, which I'll be honest with you, I kind of knew that was a pipe dream. I, you know, the supply chain issues going on, I just didn't expect it. That was being very optimistic in my opinion. Uh, we ended up not getting it till mid-April. You know, it's just the way the world works now. Nothing's coming on time. So I don't fault them for that. You know, I'm sure it's things that are under control. So, of course, I did put in my 21 Bronco playlist that I've got saved in my profile. You'll see a video that uh, Midland Motorsports, or sorry, Middleton Motorsports uh, did on the install. And you'll also see a video that was filmed at Supercell, our friend Dave over at All Terrain Nation. He did a video walk around of it. Uh, also, I got that saved to that playlist. So that way you guys could review it as well. I wanted to save the video for myself for more of a review as far as after use. So this is the one month after use. We'll probably try to do another one maybe six months down the road uh, just to kind of see more of a long-term issue. Uh, off the bat, some of the most common questions I get, you know, is there wind noise? Does it leak? Uh, any quality issues so to speak you know the factory hard tops do have a bad reputation even the newer ones see posters or pictures of people posting where they're delaminating and such i'm going to tell you right now so far i've not had any of that the wind issue is mainly due to the tires so what wind noise i do get i shouldn't say wind noise but what noise i do get is mostly due with these big large mud terrains i don't have i have fender deletes on there so you hear that noise and you can tell you can tell the difference between wind noise and tire noise so the majority of the noise you're hearing when you're going down the freeway is from the tires, which comes underneath. So the rest not going to help that with it, much with that. As far as the light bar, that light bar is noisy as hell. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know I tried everything. I tried a silencer. I tried the little thing that you rivet on it to try to help it out when I had the soft top on here. And with the soft top, I had Overland mattresses <laughs> stuff between the Bedmini shade and the top itself to try to reduce that flapping. It's horrible, horrible. My uh, husband didn't want to ride with me anywhere. It just You couldn't hear, you couldn't have a conversation. I couldn't talk to people on my Bluetooth phone headset because the noise was so loud. Uh, so we did take some decibel measurements on the way up to Middleton to get that uh, hardtop installed. And also on the way back, I also took some, uh, and I'll share these on here too, some decibel readings from the iPhone app. Uh, you know, when I was in Tennessee of doing 50 and 60 miles per hour. So keep in mind, most of my noise is coming from the tires. So I don't really have an apples to apples comparison as far as that factory mic hardtop. But as far as the soft top, it's a huge difference. Uh, you're talking about quite a bit of decibel difference. I can actually have conversations in this thing. Uh, now you might hear a little tiny bit of wind noise at the top. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. If you want a Bronco that doesn't have any air noise whatsoever, my bet is you're probably going to have better luck with a solid one piece uh, as far as that goes. And maybe not even then. If you want a top, that, if you want a, an SUV, four wheel drive capable SUV with, no, with minimal noise, get you a Lexus GX and be done with it. You're not going to get it from a Jeep. You're not going to get it from a Bronco. Anything with removable roof is going to have some inherent noise issues. Uh, it's just mag a matter of how manageable or how tolerable it is to you. So uh, having said that, I will post those numbers. This is a huge improvement over the soft top for sure. Uh, one of my friends has a MIG top with the same light bar. Um, I want to try to get with him. He's been on vacation. Him and his wife had a vacation in Hawaii here the last couple of weeks. So as time allows, I'll try to get with him. We'll maybe do some comparisons on, the, on both vehicles to see what the differences are. He has the same exhaust too. So to see, uh, I don't think he doesn't have the same tires, but uh, he may by the time we test this. But anyway, so I uh, wanted to kind of just go over that with you real quick and point that out to you guys. Uh, no water leakage. I've took this through many a car washes in the short time I've had it. Uh, automatic car wash, touchless car washes. I've not took it through the touch ones because I don't like taking my truck through those. Uh, the hand towel uh, wash, I had it through them. No leaking issues whatsoever. Uh, Really, there's nothing else to report on it, to be honest with you. I mean, like I said, I love it. It's great. Is it going to be like riding in a Cadillac? No. But it's going to be a lot better than uh, what you're used to. So having said that, question might come is, okay, Jody, if you would you upgrade from a factory MIG top? Honest to God, having not really rode in a MIG top, I don't really know definitively. But if it's if, but if, unless there's like a huge difference, I probably wouldn't. This was definitely nicer than the factory top, don't get me wrong. Um, but I don't think that it would, 
be enough to negate having to pay out six thousand dollars more for a hardtop. I think the people who want to buy aftermarket hardtops primarily are going to be people who had soft tops or opted for a soft top to try to get their Broncos early. And I'm going to be honest with you, the reports you've seen, I know you've all seen on the forums, if you try to buy a factory hardtop and piece it out, like an insurance adjuster would if you had a claim, I've seen reports of it being anywhere from eleven dollars to $14,000. So be mindful of that. You're going to get a lesser quality top and pay probably about twice as much. Uh, so, you know, just be mindful. This I, I don't know if I would recommend any aftermarket hardtop for that matter, let alone this one. Uh, for somebody who already has a factory one, just because I don't think there's going to be a huge difference in benefit. Now, if you have a soft top, like me, and you're wanting that hard top experience, this is your guy, in my opinion. It depends on what your priorities are. If your priority is wind noise, you're probably better off trying to wait and see what the AVD one pieces do. Uh, you know, if you want the same modularity as the factory one, definitely your piece right here. This right here. So, overall and all, Love it. Plan on keeping it. Uh, don't regret it at all. It's probably one of the better purchases I've made since buying the Bronco. Uh, you know, we could all sit here and bitch and moan about Ford not offering us an option, but it is what it is. So anyway, hope you guys like and subscribe. Please join us. We got more content to come. We do have a uh, roof rack order from Trail Racks to go on this thing. It should fit. Everything is exact same specs, so it should be able to fit pretty easily. Uh, of course, we got some other stuff going down the road too. Plus, we got some trips. We got Colorado coming up. We got Bronco Palooza. Soon, sand dunes take over in Michigan. Uh, probably overland. Well, we're going to overland the red down the Daniel Boone back, Backcountry Byway in Kentucky. Uh, plus, we'll probably have some trips even outside of those big ones. So, uh, please check it out. If you happen to be at Supercell, Wisconsin, I think we're going to be there the Friday of. Uh, of course, we drive out to URA that Saturday, so we can't stay long. So we'll definitely be at that. Might even hang out with the Michigan Bronco Club some too as well. And of course, I'll always be out with the Chicago Land Group. But anyway, hope you guys have a nice day. Take it easy. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And I'll try to answer them as good as I can. Take care. Okay, so another thing I forgot to mention in the filming was that you know people sometimes ask about squeaking and stuff like that. So this thing, when you're driving on normal pavement, you don't really hear anything. But when you're hitting like big potholes or big speed bumps or articulating off-road, it does squeak a little bit. Uh, we do have the trail racks, roof rack coming. I don't know if that'll help some. I've heard some people say it helped theirs. It's nothing that's, you know, not tolerable for me. But, you know, it is what it is. I think the mixed top do it too. So, like I said, it goes back to having a one-piece versus having a true modular hard top. It's, if you're willing to sacrifice that squeakiness every now and again, then... Uh, Get your modular if you don't want to have any of that. Get a one-piece hardtop and be done with it. So I'll throw that in there. As always, hope you liked this video. If you like this video and others, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It helps us out a great deal if you do, and it doesn't cost you a thing. Uh, like I said before, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer them.